Hello and welcome to Dr. Z's Health Education Project. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about the treatment of retinal vein occlusions. Retinal vein occlusions result in bleeding and swelling in the retina and sometimes damage to the blood circulation of the retina. So as with any condition uh, in life, you have several options if you've had a retinal vein occlusion. Option number one, do nothing. And for some retinal vein occlusions, those that are mild, sometimes those that are branch retinal vein occlusions, doing nothing is a reasonable option. Some uh, retinal vein occlusions will heal themselves and improve on their own. So doing nothing is an option. And you should ask your doctor uh, to decide if doing nothing is a reasonable option for your particular retinal vein occlusion. Unfortunately, for many retinal vein occlusions, there is bleeding and swelling in the retina that causes blurriness and loss of the vision, and doing nothing results in further harm to the vision. So for those patients, treatment is necessary. And when it comes to the treatment of retinal vein occlusions, we really have two options. Medication and laser. There are pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages to both of these uh, forms of treatment. When it comes to medication, there are a couple different options. We have Avastin, which is also used for the treatment of macular degeneration. We have Lucentis, also used for the treatment of macular degeneration. And we have steroids, and there are two different kinds of steroids, I'm not going to get into that but injecting uh, steroids uh, into the eye is also uh, a medical option. The purpose of this video is not to get into which of these medications is the best. That's going to depend on your retinal vein occlusion and your eye uh, condition, and that's between you and your doctor to decide. I just want to list out some of the medical options, Avastin, Lucentis, and steroids. Now, these medications have to be injected into the eye to be effective. And I know that sounds horrible, and for someone who's never heard of that or seen that or experienced that, it can actually sound very frightening and causes a lot of anxiety in my patients. But fortunately, we have um, excellent techniques of numbing the eye and making this uh, a relatively uh, painless uh, experience. And most patients afterwards, when I ask them, uh, did you think it was uh, actually as bad as you, as you thought? And they say, no, it, it wasn't as bad as I thought. So the benefit of injecting medication into the eye is it can act quickly, it's very powerful, and many patients who receive these medications uh, improve their vision. In fact, some recent studies have shown that patients getting some of these drugs, uh, about 40% uh, percent of the patients will actually notice significant improvement in their vision. Now the downside of uh, medication is that the drugs are temporary. So notice how I wrote here, treatment. I did not write cure. So these medications, as well as even laser, and I'll put this in parentheses, are treatments, not a cure. And so these drugs often need to be repeated. And with Avast and Lucentis, some patients require uh, injections of medication every month, sometimes for six months or up to a year or even longer to, to reduce some of the swelling and bleeding from a retinal vein occlusion. With steroids, the advantage is that they don't need to be injected as frequently. Steroids may last uh, three months or four months, but the steroids have side effects uh, such as uh, cataract formation and uh, increase in the eye pressure. So since the medications uh, don't act quite as long, uh, laser is also an option. And with laser, uh, basically the goal of laser is to try to burn uh, the leaky areas and try to reduce the retinal swelling uh, through the application of laser burns. Uh, the disadvantage of laser is it's not very strong and fast at bringing the vision back. Uh, it's better probably to stabilize the vision rather than to improve the vision. And laser really works better for small vein occlusions, uh, not central retinal vein occlusions. So laser is more of a longer acting uh, treatment. Medication is more of a shorter acting. Both have their advantages 
Uh, some doctors are using only medication, some doctors are using only laser, uh, many doctors using both a combination of medication and laser. I should point out also that uh, whenever you're considering a treatment, you should not only consider how effective the treatment is, and medication and laser are fairly effective at stabilizing and improving the vision, but you should also consider some of the complications and risks. I mentioned to you the risks of steroids, which is high eye pressure and cataract formation. Uh, you don't really have that risk with Avastin and Lucentis, but uh, you do have the risk of any medication that gets in injected into the eye of a couple of things, and I'll put that perhaps down here under possible complications. You have infection, and this just comes from the procedure of injecting any medication into the eye infection, and retinal detachment. And fortunately, these complications are very, very rare and occur less than one in a thousand times. So if you're suffering from severe vision loss, going blind from retinal vein occlusion, the very, very small risk of an infection or retinal detachment is far lower than the potential benefit of regaining or stabilizing vision from one of these drugs. Now, one last point, uh, not only do many patients with retinal vein occlusions require ongoing treatment, whether that's medication or laser, but some complications from retinal vein occlusions cannot be treated with either medication or laser. And for those patients who have severe retinal vein occlusions with damage to the actual blood circulation and blood flow to the retina, these treatments will not be effective and unfortunately uh, they will not help a person regain their vision. So there are limitations as of 2012 to our treatments for retinal vein occlusions, but fortunately these medicines and laser uh, do work for many people. And if you have a retinal vein occlusion, you should talk to your doctor about uh, what your options are. Thank you and see you in the next video.